Hey guys, we're from Game Bad today, bringing our video, and today we're going into part two of our weapon wishlist video for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, launching later this year here in 2022. So, first off, if you didn't check out part one yet, go ahead and I'll link that down below in the description. That is part one where we covered mainly 100% assault rifles in that video. It was a long video, 42 minutes, but we went into a lot of different assault rifles and a lot of different weapon conversions we can make from those assault rifles. So, Today we're going to cover a few more assault rifles, just three three more here that are left out of the original video, and then we're going to get into LMGs, and we're going to break it up from there. So this will end up being probably around a four-part series, most likely, but today we're going to cover just a few stragglers for assault rifles, and then LMGs and weapon conversions that can be made out of those. Again, weapon with is part two for Call of Duty Modern Warfare. If you enjoy the content, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel, that way stay tuned for all the Modern Warfare 2 content we're going to be getting when that game does eventually come out. Can't wait to jump in and do a lot of those weapon conversions. Now, again, big shout out to Alvin, one of our members here in the community. I'm going to link his YouTube channel down below. He did do a lot of renders in Photoshop where he was able to take the existing assets for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019 and kind of make some different weapons here on the wish list. So he did a few of those with the Assault Rifle video for Part 1. And I believe there's going to be around one or two here for the LMG video that we'll get into. And then there will be more down the road as well and the other parts that we'll cover for him. But again, I'll link his channel down below where he has a couple of videos there where he goes, he speed runs through them, fast forwards through how he does them in Photoshop. It's actually really impressive and they're very, very accurate um, builds of the weapons. Maybe something that we can expect to see how they'll look in Modern Warfare 2 later this year. So we'll go ahead now and jump right into it and again this is going to be a few part series and then we'll go back and probably do some more things regarding uh milsim operators things like that and kind of outline what i would like for an overall wish list of the game but jumping right into it first off we're going to start with these few assault rifles that i have left first off being the dsa 58 or the david slavago arms uh basically the modernized fal so the dsa 58 is an american made reproduction of the fn fal However, it is more modernized and ergonomic. So there's picketing rails, different types of buttstocks you can get on there as well. You can upgrade this thing. There's different variants available like the DSA-58 OSW, the Operational Specialist Weapon, I believe is the acronym there. And again, this still firing that 7.62 by 51 millimeter NATO round with the capability of going fully automatic. Now in Modern Warfare 2019, we did see the FAL and there were some blueprints which turned it into the DSA-58 OSW. However, I would like to see the base DSA-58 OSW with the full modernized handguards, buttstocks, etc. Um, as well as the conversions there and to make it into the OSW, the Operational Specialist Weapon, and allow it to have a fully automatic capabil capability. Now, like we talked about with a lot of the weapons in Part 1 of this wish list, I think it's a good idea to kind of operate on a point system. So go ahead and check that video out again, Part 1, if you didn't catch that. But basically, different weapons would be assign points to pick them into your class and then different attachments could also be linked together so you're locked in with certain attachments so with that fully automatic capability whether that's a perk or not or it could be a barrel attachment which is going to lock it into full auto so essentially if you do make this weapon into a full auto whether it's that at base or you convert it into full auto you should lock a few of the different attachments on that weapon that way the weapon itself can't be abused with the different attachments on there. And again, all the, the attachments as well as the weapon would cost a different amount of points. Like we discussed in part one of this, let's just say you have 10 points right off the bat for your entire kit. You need to allocate your different we your different points per weapon and a weapon attachment. So that way, if you have overpowered weapons or attachments, easily the developers can just up those points to make it less accessible in the game. Very similar to Insurgency Sandstorm. Uh, again, we go into more detail on that in part one of this of this video that we covered. But the DSA-58, definitely a really, really aesthetically pleasing weapon. I would love to see it make a return here in the game for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Moving on, we have the Polish Assault Rifle, the MSBS. And this is a Polish Assault Rifle, again, firing 5.56 by 45mm NATO. Nothing really special about this run. It is really aesthetically pleasing to look at. And then the conversion for this, again, we talked about this with a lot of the weapons in part one. The conversion for this, you could convert it into the MSBS-B, being the bullpup variant of this weapon. Again, this could be a stock option, which would fix it into a bullpup state. Now, just because it's turned into a bullpup does not mean it's a less accurate weapon. As a matter of fact, it's a more compact weapon with just as long of a barrel length, if not longer, because the weapon itself is going to be more compact, allowing for 
a longer barrel. So that's the benefits of the bullpup designs. Really high level, obviously, explanation there. However, having bullpup options available for weapons like this by locking that stock option, having a bullpup option, it's going to com completely transform the weapon. And again, that can cost X amount of points. And it would just allow for a really nice conversion for the weapon. Could give you a nice ergonomic boost instead of these ugly uh, no stock options that we see. The bullpup variants or perks or stock options, however they end up doing it, would be another option instead of no stock or a folded stock or in addition to. Next up, given the current situation going around going on here in the world with the Russian invasion of Ukraine, I think it's fitting that we include the Malyuk. Now the Malyuk, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, is a Ukrainian assault rifle, which was designed to replace their Ukrainian license Tavor 21s, which they print there, which are named the Fort 222s. Now, they decided to replace these with the Maliacs because Ukrainians, obviously very close to Russia, they've always used AK, different variants of the AK, the AKMs, AK-74s, etc. So, they also have had a history with different um, bullpup variants of the AK. So, the Maliac is, again, an attempt to replace their assault rifles, mainly the Fort 222, as well as some of the older AK uh, platforms that they have and that they adopted from the collapse of the Soviet Union. The Maliac, think of it high level essentially as still a bullpup variant of the AK as far as 545 by 39 millimeter. And you can also have a variant for the 762 by 39 millimeter. So the good thing about this is it will take those older AK mags. And as well as there's a lot of different modularity on this weapon. You can tack this thing out and make it look really, really sleek and sexy. And a lot of different modularity as well as ergonomic benefits. Picatinny rail attachments uh picatinny rail dust covers etc because it is a bullpup design you can put on all kinds of modernized attachments where you really can't with a lot of these older ak's obviously without third party uh zeneco modifications on the weapon so the maliac is a really nice looking weapon and again it performs as you see a lot of photos of the ukrainian special operation forces using these right now in the current battle against the russians as the russians are invading the, the country of ukraine so Again, very fitting given the world circumstances right now going on. The Maliac would be really nice to see an appearance as well as uh, some operators and store items for the Ukrainian Special Operation Forces. And heck, if they only were still supporting Modern Warfare, I would say they could do that now. But hopefully um, that type of money down the road for those types of bundles can go maybe towards relief for the country of Ukraine and rebuilding, etc. So those are the assault rifles that I had left over. Jumping into the LMGs. First off, going to be one of my favorite LMGs of all time for all video games, especially back in Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare when that launched back in 2007, I believe it was. The M60 E4 would be the one here. I believe in, in Call of Duty it was the E3 at the time. The M60 E4 is, again, an upgraded version of the M60 platform developed by U.S. Ordnance. This is a really nice modernized version of the M60. Cuts down on the weight, cuts down on the barrel length. A lot of improvements over the original M60 as well as the the M60 E3 platform, which was also introduced. Now, the attachments for this to convert it, you could have a conversion kit here on this weapon based on the different attachments to upgrade it to the M60 Echo 6 or the E6. And again, this is the latest version of the M60 produced here. And it's actually in service by the Danish military. It actually beat out the HK-121, also known as the MG-5, in trials. They selected the M60 Echo 6 or E6 over the HK-121 slash MG-5 based on their trials. It's a lighter weight machine gun, more compact. They, they decrease the weight of the weapon. I believe it comes in right around 20 pounds. And they decrease the barrel length of the weapon from the M60 E4 as well as made a bunch of upgrades to the weapon itself the good thing about this in real life the m60 e4 um you can send these weapons in the u.s ordinance and they essentially apply the upgrade kit so you don't need to buy a whole new weapon the m60 e4 can be taken apart and put back together as an e6 with their upgrade kits so this is a very interesting weapon it would be very fitting here in the game we haven't seen an m60 in a call of duty game i believe since call of duty modern warfare 3 so it has been quite a while i would really like to see the M60 E4 and the E6 make an appearance. Again, this is a light machine gun firing 7.62 by 51 millimeter NATO. So the M60 Echo 4 and Echo 6 are the first one on the list here. Moving on is going to be the Zeneco PKP Pechenegg. So in Modern Warfare 2019, we did see the PKM make an appearance. We did also see 
a blueprint option there, which turned this into a Zeneco version of the PKM, giving it a lot of nice modernized furniture on it from Zeneco. And here in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, I would like to see it start a Zeneco modified PKP Pechenek. Now, if you're not familiar with what the Pechenek is, you could do the conversion for this in Modern Warfare 2019. It's essentially an upgraded version of the PKM with a heavier barrel on there. You also have an increased gas system or an improved gas system as well as an additional carry handle there on the gas system itself. You can mount optics there. So Zeneco PKP Pechenek would be a really good one here. And really with this one, back in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, you did have the Pechenek. For optical attachments, these weapons typically are using dovetail mounts on their wet on the pkps just like the older ak's do the dovetail mounts which have that rail attachment which goes over the dust cover or the leaf site here in this case on the pkm pkp pechenek and so really in modern warfare 3 i believe they had this right where you needed to reload it you had a you had to shift that down that uh the dovetail mounted rail with the optic on it to the left hand side pick up the feed tray and then reload the weapon from there bring the feed tray down and then flip the dovetail mounted optic back over the feed tray or the dust cover there in order to be back in action so just small details like that versus in modern warfare 2019 they kind of had picatinny railed feed tray dust cover i think it would be really good if they went back to this old design would be really cool to see that with the zeneco furniture on the pkp Pechenegg. They have things like the B, I believe it's a B33 Sport handguard, things like that. We did see a lot of these uh, attachments on the Modern Warfare 2019 version for that blueprint as well, which was really good to see. However, I like to see this at base for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Now, conversion here, you could have a conversion with a different barrel option to turn it into a base PKM of different barrel lengths. You could also have a stock option, similar to what we talked about previously, a stock option to convert this into the Zeneco bullpup pkp pechenek so this is essentially a conversion kit in real life which turns the pkp pechenek into a bullpup variant of the rifle and again the benefits of the of the pkp or any bullpup in general is that it cuts down on the overall length without reducing the barrel length so therefore your effective range is still going to be the same however you have a lighter and shorter more compact weapon for those type of uh urban engagements so this would be a really good conversion i was honestly a little disappointed they didn't do this in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019. However, this is the perfect opportunity to do that. And now the PKP Pechenegg or the PKM is firing that 762 by 54 millimeter R round. So that's a, a pretty big beefy round. Again, one of the most probably iconic machine guns in the world. Now you could even go as far to have another conversion of 762 by 51 to turn it into the, I believe it's the Polish UKM, which is essentially the same thing, just firing NATO rounds. However, since we're going to have enough 7.62 by 51 millimeter machine guns. I don't really think that's necessary. I think starting with a Zeneco PKP Pechenegg, converted it to a PKM, and most importantly, a Zeneco Bullpup PKP Pechenegg would be the move here for this weapon in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Next up, we're going to move on to the Mark 46. So the Mark 46, also known as the M249 Saw, essentially the Mark 46 is an upgraded version of that, which makes a lot of improvements on this weapon and also does um gets rid of i should say the magazine feed feeding portion of the weapon as well from the base m249 saw the mark 46 lighter weight and again upgraded version of the m249 saw utilized by i believe uh mainly i believe socom initiated this as well as the mark 46 which is the 762 by 51 millimeter version of it but the mark 40 or the mark 48 excuse me so in this case the mark 46 would be that new improved recent version of the m249 saw we'll start with that now the conversion here could be the mga 249 saw k or the machine gun armory m249 saw k this is a lighter weight more compact shorter design of the m249 saw produced by machine gun armory and and or mga and this fires a variety of different rounds that being the 556 by 45 millimeter nato same as the mark 46 it also has conversions here to fire the 300 blackout as well as 762 by 51 millimeter nato so a lot of different conversions here with this this again would be a lighter weight more mobile version similar to what we saw with the para version in call of duty modern warfare 2019 however making it into a more modernized mga or 
yeah, MGA M249 saw K with these different ammo conversions would be really cool as well. And last but not least, the FN Evils. So this is going to be basically the newest iteration or the modernized next step in the M249 saw. This was just really publicized a few months back in April of 2021. And the FN Evils, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, is the newest iteration of machine guns from FN Herstal. Again, introduced in 2021. Also firing 556 by 45 millimeter NATO and uh, another version with a 762 by 51 millimeter NATO. Again, this is a lighter weight machine gun with still a lot of the redeeming aspects of the M249 saw, the Mark 46. Lighter weight has a lot of improvements. And again, just a more sleek, modern design utilizing different materials. About 30% lighter than a lot of other machine guns in use currently. It comes in around 12 pounds overall and has the ability to quick swap barrels, things like that. A lot of modern machine guns uh, should have. Also, the ability to fire the 6.5 Creedmoor and the 260 Remington variants are available for this. So this is something that I think is going to probably end up rolling out here in the military the next uh, five to ten years, most likely in some aspects. So it'd be really cool to see this as a conversion or a blueprint here in the game as well. Next up, we're going to cover the Russian RPL-20. So this is actually a prototype machine gun. It's still in testing. It hasn't been uh, it hasn't been adopted or, or mass produced by any means but this is really this is in fact the only belt fed machine gun from the russians ever to fire 545 by 39 millimeter that russian round same as the ak-74 series so that 5.45 5, 5 by 39 millimeter the rpl 20 really nice looking weapon again very fitting for a game like this uh decent rate of fire this is essentially essentially their version of the m249 saw for the most part. This is a nice, light, belt-fed, light machine gun from the Russians, the RPL-20. Brand new weapon. This is something I think we'll definitely see in service alongside the PKM, again, probably within the next five to ten years. So it would only make sense to have a weapon like this in the game with some different aesthetic conversions on there as well. Next up, the MG3. So the HK, HK MG3. The MG3 is the modernized version of the World War II version of the that the Germans used the MG42. However, the only difference here mainly is that it's been upgraded with some internal workings, but mainly to fire the 762 by 51 millimeter NATO round, which is a much larger round than that 8 millimeter Kurz round that it was firing as the MG42. So it fires the bigger NATO standard round now, uh, thus dubbed the MG3. And again, it still has that really fast rate of fire at over a thousand rounds per minute very deadly machine gun still in use today and you can have a conversion here to upgrade it to the mg3 kws now the mg3 kws is essentially a modernized more modernized version of the mg3 with more modernized furniture to kind of keep this thing running in service add his modularity to the weapon you can put picatinny rail points on here to mount optics more easily grips things like that lights uh pec 15s etc on this weapon different stock options Again, the MG3 KWS is something going on here to kind of keep the MG3 up to date and in service while they work out that the, the German military works out the logistics of the MG121 or the HK121 or the MG5, as it's called, which we saw here in Modern Warfare 2019. So while that's being figured out and finalized and they can mass produce them to replace the MG3, ultimately, you still have the MG3 in service as a KWS and the base MG3 as well. And you see this in service in a lot of other countries outside of the German military as well right now. Mainly the Danish were using it until they replaced it with the M60E6. So MG3, one weapon we didn't get in Modern Warfare 2019, which I really would love to see in Modern Warfare 2 here in 2022. Next up, some more Heckler & Koch weapons here, mainly going to be the MG4. So the MG4, again, this is basically the same thing as the Mark 46 or the M249 saw, as well as the RPL-20. This is basically the German version of the M249 saw. Not much differences here. Again, it's a standard German light machine gun, um, firing 5.56 by 45 millimeter NATO. So it's firing the same round as the saw. Now, we did see both these machine guns, the MG4 and the M249 saw, in Battlefield 4, and they performed... 100% the same, minus one recoil to the right, one recoil to the left. So again, where we talk about variety of weapons, we're going through a lot of weapons here, but a variety is always a good thing, especially if the stats are so similar 
to the point where only one recoils a different way versus another way of another one. I think that's completely fine. It gives the player a lot of variety. So the MG4 here, we have basically our third weapon right now firing this lighter rifle round cartridge that's a essentially dubbed a saw or a squad automatic weapon. The MG4 would be another great addition here. You could have a conversion as well for the MG5. On the MG5, the HK121, we did see in Modern Warfare 2019 as the, or the M91, I think it was. I had to go and look at it here, which is why I was kind of stuttering there. But yes, the M91 is what it was called in Modern Warfare 2019. Uh, the MG5 or the HK121 could be a conversion or an upgrade with attachments from the MG4 to turn it into the MG5 HK121, or as we know it from Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019, the M91. Next up, we're gonna go with the Sig Sauer MG338 NGSW, NGSW standing for Next Generation Squad Weapon. We did see this make an introduction as the very last weapon in the life cycle of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019 as the RAL MG. This thing firing 338 Norma Magnum. It's a very big boy machine gun firing uh, a large, large round. And again, this is part of that NGSW, Next Generation Squad Weapon uh, System program. This is going on right now. So it would be really good to see this weapon make a return is a heavy machine, heavier machine gun here in the field. Now, typically you're not firing this thing on the move like you are in Modern Warfare 2019. You're gonna be wanting this fired in a bipod or a vehicle mount or things like that. But again, really good to see this in the game. One of my more my favorite machine guns in 2019, too bad it was introduced so late in the game's life cycle. A lot of fun to use. Definitely wanna see this thing make a return. Next up, the Knight's Armament Company LAMG, or the Light Assault Machine Gun. We did see this in Modern Warfare 2019 as the Finn LMG. I think it's definitely appropriate to see this come back in the same regard we saw it in with the different adverse gas settings on this weapon to increase the rate of fire. Everything else about it I think is perfect. I just want to see this thing back from Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019. Knight's Armament Light Assault Machine Gun is a really good machine gun, which is essentially a different type of machine gun. It's very lightweight, and again, it's really meant to fill the role of a rifleman However, you have that extra magazine or belt capacity to let loose when you need to. And it's really designed to have a light machine gunner in the squad without the enemy knowing you have a light machine gunner in the squad and use it effectively like a rifle because of its lighter weight and compact design. And it also has the constant recoil system, meaning there is essentially no recoil on this weapon whatsoever. You could also have a conversion for the AMG, which is, again, just the upgraded ammo version. So instead of 5.56 five, by 45 NATO, the AMG is going to fire 7.62 by 51 NATO. But again, we have quite a bit of those weapons in the game already, which we're going to discuss on this list. So I don't really think you need that upgrade. I think copying and pasting it from Modern Warfare 2019 is the way to go here. Next up, one of those 7.62 by 51 millimeter machine guns we we're talking about, again, here is going to be the M240 Bravo. Now, again, this thing it ultimately replaced the M60 in service for the U.S. military. We could have an upgrade here for the M240L or Lima. This is a lighter weight version of the weapon. Ultimately, this thing it weighs a lot more than the M60. A lot of troops don't really love how heavy it is and just a pain to carry around, which is why it would kind of be nice to see the M60E6 come back and replace this eventually, but the M240 Bravo and M240 Lima, we did see the M240 Bravo in Modern Warfare 2. I would like to see it return here in Modern Warfare 2 2022. It would be very fitting. Next up, the AUG H-Bar. This, again, is supposed to be a squad automatic weapon version of the Austrian assault rifle, the AUG with a longer barrel, bipod system, etc. We did see this in the original Modern Warfare 2022 yet again, so it would be fitting again to see this make a return here in 2022. The conversion here would be to the AUG A3, so you can convert it from the H-Bar, the light machine gun version, into the assault rifle version of the most modernized version of it, that being the AUG A3, again, with the, the same ammo type as the H-Bar, the 5x6x45 millimeter NATO. You could have different magazine capacities there. For the H-Bar, you could have that 50 round drum, and then the uh, assault rifle, you could have maybe a, a 40 mag and a 30 mag for this as well. So it'd be really cool to see the AUG come back as the H-Bar with the conversion to the most modernized version of the AUG assault rifle, that being the AUG A3. Next up, another returning weapon from Modern Warfare 2 as well as Modern Warfare 2019, that being the L86. So the L86, again, is that British 
light machine gun, the, the light machine gun, which is no longer in service by or the, it's a different variant of the L85. So the L86, again, this was in the original Modern Warfare 2. So it would only be fitting to see it come back here as the L86. We did see it in Modern Warfare 2019 as well. So we could see it return like that. However, the conversion could be to an L85A3. Now the L85A3 is the most recent version of the L85. You had the original L85. You had the A2 and now the A3, which is coming in here, which is going to be co-developed or is being co-developed, same as the A2 by Agent K. So the L85A3 would be a conversion for the L86. Again, another light machine gun, which converts into a very modernized assault rifle here would be really good to see. One addition to that is that in Modern Warfare 2019, the L86 and the conversions there to the L85 just looked very old on this weapon. They always, it just looked like a very old beat up weapon. So to have it up to date and new looking with all the modern furniture for the, the, the handguards, etc., would be fitting. I'm not sure why they had this very old 90s looking design like the original L85A1 for Modern Warfare 2019, but to see it upgraded here in Modern Warfare 2 2022 would be nice. Next up, the LSAT or the Lightweight Small Arms Technology. This is again a, this was part of the LSAT program to find and replace machine guns. This is a lightweight machine gun, just very similar to the uh, Knights Armor Company LAMG, light assault machine gun. However, the LSAT uh, also is capable of firing cased telescoped ammunition as well as caseless ammunition. And again, it's a very lightweight machine gun. Um, really kind of kicked off a new, I guess, technological leap out of the uh, light machine gun category here with the ammo conversions for this. Um, be really good to see this. It's very similar to the HK designs, which were firing the caseless and caseless and case telescoped ammunition in the 90s and late 80s however this is a the next evolution of that again a very lightweight machine gun the program kind of came to a halt while the u.s military decided what it wanted to do with it but it was designed as part of that lsat program and a very effective machine gun at that and again you have those different ammo conversions you could fire fire from the base 556 by 45 or just start with the cased telescoped ammo and have an option for the caseless ammunition Next up, the Israeli IWI Negev. So this, again, is a lightweight machine gun firing 5.56 by 45mm NATO. There's also another version here. We have the Negev 5, which is the one we're discussing primarily here with as far as the 5.56 by 45mm NATO. And then you have the Negev 7, which far as the 7.62 by 51mm NATO. So you could have those as the conversion. Again, the IWI Negev is an Israeli-made light machine gun with a fairly high rate of fire, anywhere from 800 to 1,000 Round, plus rounds per minute very iconic machine gun the idea of wine gave it'd be really nice to see this make an appearance i think we i want to say we've seen this in previous call of duty titles however i don't remember which games it has been in it's definitely made appearance in a lot of fps shooters uh in the past but it would be a really good addition to see here for this list in modern warfare 2 2022 so that is our list of machine guns just to recap here we covered the dsa 58 for the assault rifles we covered the ms bs and the msbsb we also covered the ukrainian maliuk light machine guns we covered the m60 the zenico pkp patch and egg the mark 46 with conversions the russian rpl 20 the mg3 the mg4 with the mg5 conversion the sig 338 ngsw knights armor company lamg the m240 the h bar with the conversion to the aug a3 the l86 with the conversion to the l86 or the l85 a3 the LSAT and the IWI and the Gabe and the Gabe 5. Let me know what you guys think of this list down below. We'll be having part three out hopefully later on this weekend. In that, in that video, we'll be covering any straggling LMGs that I may have missed here, as well as SMGs and potentially fit snipers in there as well, depending on what the list is looking like, which is pretty long. So most likely those will be two separate videos. Let me know what you think of part two here of the Weapon Whistlers for Modern Warfare two later this year in 2022 and again check out part one if you missed that already where we go into 42 minutes of in-depth assault rifle talk so till next time this is buffner gaming with the modern warfare part two wish list for 2022 modern warfare 2 till next time buffer gaming out